We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are... In May 1961, the then President of the United States, John F. Kennedy, said we're going to get a man to the moon and return him safely to the Earth. This was something that nobody had thought about how they were actually going to achieve it. So not only did the United States have to develop all the technology and all the training, the astronauts to actually perform that task, they had to set up a system of communications right around the world, international partners to assist in this journey to the moon, to achieve it by the end of that decade. Now, three keyframe stations were playing a role in Apollo 11 on that day. That was our station here at Tibbinbilla, the Honeysuckle Creek tracking station here in Canberra, and also the CSIRO's Parkes radio telescope. As all the signals from the astronauts on the moon will be fed through Parkes into Australian television networks, and then by satellite to the rest of the world, we will be a split second ahead of everybody else. The Parkes telescope has been picked for the role because it's the most powerful in Australia. At the time Armstrong and Aldrin are on the moon, other radio telescopes on Earth will be out of range. The United States originally wanted to receive those first pictures of Armstrong walking on the moon through their tracking station in Goldstone, California. But they actually had a little problem on that day. When those signals were received, they had to send them to Houston, Texas, where Mission Control is. But somewhere along the way, in all the excitement, somebody at the California station had forgotten to flick one particular switch and many thousands of switches the right way around. So the first pictures of Armstrong about to walk on the moon actually came up upside down. The image was also highly contrasted. The signal was being degraded. So NASA looks to Australia. Now at the critical moment as Neil was coming down the ladder, Parks didn't quite have a TV picture at that moment because for them, the moon hadn't risen high enough above their local horizon to get into their main beam path and get a strong signal. Here at Tivinbilla, we were on the command module with astronaut Michael Collins. Neil's coming down the ladder, he wasn't going to wait for us to switch over to the lunar module, so NASA looks to the Honeysuckle Creek tracking station. And at their station, their tiny 26 metre antenna, the smallest of all the dishes in the world, playing a role in this first historic moon landing, they had a great picture. And importantly, it was the right way up. And when NASA saw that, they flicked the switch just in time so that 600 million people around the world could witness Neil taking those final few steps down the ladder to plant his left foot on the surface of the moon. And we're getting a picture on the TV. We have both uh, there's a great deal of contrast in it, and it's currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out a fair amount of detail. Ghost on video, Houston TV. Ghost on video, go ahead. Can you confirm that your uh, reverse switch is in the proper position? Okay, the camera being upside down. Stand by, we'll be uh, uh, reverse. Uh, we are in reverse. Oh, Roger, thank you. Um, uh, at the foot of the ladder, the lamp foot beds are only uh, uh, impressed in the surface about... Roger, we're looking at honeysuckle now. It's a little bit cleaner. Okay. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So it was that little dish at Honeysuckle Creek, those first pictures. But of course then we had parks and the moon had risen high enough in its local skies about nine minutes into the broadcast. They were getting a superior signal coming in through their larger receiver. And so then NASA selected those images for the rest of the two and a half hour broadcast to that audience around the world. Honeysuckle Network, right, you might pass one of the park uh, people that their labor was not in vain. They've given us the best TV yet. I think Australians were incredibly proud that we were playing a part in this gigantic journey to send those first humans to the surface of the moon. After the success of the Apollo 11 mission and consequent missions like Apollo 12 and then the drama of Apollo 13, public interest actually dropped off. Why did we need to continue to go to the moon? We'd beaten the Russians there. The end of the space race had come. But overall, I actually think that interest in space exploration has continued. We've gone off to places like Mars with various rovers and orbiters, going off to Jupiter and Saturn and the epic Voyager missions which are now heading out of our solar system. So I think there's actually an appetite by the public to continue to learn more about the universe around us, to continue to explore because as human beings, that's what we are at our most basic. We're explorers, we love the mysteries and there's no bigger mystery than the universe around us.